Today on Judge Faith, an older brother brings his little sister to court after she stops paying him for his babysitting services. I always say if he wasn't related to me, I wouldn't know him. He's urban and I'm suburban. None of these things that she's claiming prevented her from dropping her kids off to me daily. This is Judge Faith. He's busy in court right now. He'll have to call you back, okay? He's probably like, yo, I'm going to be on TV tomorrow. Y'all check me out. <laughs> and later... A fish enthusiast confronts the man he says killed his beloved pets and destroyed two expensive fish tanks. I'd be watching TV and I'd turn off the TV to watch the fish because it was like dancing with the stars, you know, dancing with the fish. <laughs> These three cops showed up at my house. They were investigating the whole incident. Do you think I killed the fish? You're responsible. I left these fish in your care. Sir, who killed the fish? Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Jason Scott says he looked after his younger sister's six kids, but when she lost her job, he stopped getting paid. He's suing for unpaid childcare services. Defendant Dana Scott says she doesn't owe because she gave her brother an expensive truck and some money, so they're even. She's countersuing for fees related to a truck. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Scott versus Scott. Thank you, Juan. Jason Scott? Yes. You were suing Dana Scott for $4,380. You say she owes you for unpaid child care services? That is correct. And you are countersuing, ma'am, for $1,018 for fees related to a truck? Yes. Are the two of you related? Yes. How? She's my younger sister. So why are you suing your younger sister here in court today? What's the relationship been like between the two of you? It's been, uh, we're very tight. We're uh, the only two siblings. We grew up in the same home together, so we're pretty close. Some time ago, uh, she started having children, and our parents persuaded me to assist her, and so I did. I uh, began to provide child care services for her, and I actually turned it into a profession. I went to school, paid for classes, and turned it into a legitimate business. So you a child care provider, not just for your sister's kids, but for other children as well? Correct. Okay, and how many children do you have, ma'am? I have a total of six children. Six, okay. And your brother was helping you by watching your children? Yes, that is correct. Ones? But prior to this case, how would you describe your relationship? What kind of person is he? Well, he is my brother, so I always say if he wasn't related to me, I wouldn't know him. What does that mean? Right. He's urban and I'm suburban. What? <laughs> yeah, I know. Okay, and so, <laughs> and, yeah, so I know. and so that means what? You know, the type of music he listens to. I don't What play... kind of music he listens he to? He listens What's wrong to with... um, hip hop music, music that has profanity in it, uh -huh. um, things that I wouldn't. So you, you never bump a little Jay Z from time to time? I do, but not with my children present. None of these things that she's uh, claiming prevented her from dropping her kids off to me daily and picking them up. I have an eight-year-old child that he allows to play um, Grand Theft Auto. The children have played the game, but um, once I was aware of the details of the game, I threw the game out. So you didn't know? You thought they were playing Pac-Man when, when they were playing the well, video games? No, I, I brought the game because I was persuaded to buy the game. They asked by for the, the game. Right. But you see that it has the MA rating, so you right, know it's I probably it not good. I threw it out once I reviewed it. And you saw threw that. it out? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, well, you're suing because you say that she hired you yes. to be her child care provider, and for two months you weren't paid. And for each of those two months, you were supposed to be paid over $2,000. Yes. And you were getting help from the state, am I correct? Yes, that is correct. So when did you find out that you weren't getting paid from the state? Once I didn't receive payment, um, there was a process where you turned in timesheets for the month that you worked, and then after you submitted those timesheets, 10 to 15 days later, you will receive payment. Okay. And then once I didn't receive payment, I questioned Dana about why I had not received payment. And she said everything was okay. I should have received the and payment. And what month was that? For the month of May. You don't get paid and you continue to watch them for the month of June as well? I did. What I was did. the reason? Well, she told me that she was uh, correcting the problem, that it was just a matter of her uh, 
making contact with her child care worker and submitting some papers. Did you ever investigate further and find out what was really going on? Yes, they finally did inform me that Dana did no, no longer qualify for the program because she was no longer working. That is, in a sense, true. We. In what does sense. in a sense mean? As, were you or were you not working? I was fired that day. You were fired, and that was in May? Yes, May 25th to be exact. But you continue to take the children over every morning and pick them up in the afternoon as if you were going to work? No, not after May the 24th. He is discussing. That's incorrect. That he's discussing before. When May. did you find out that she was fired from her job? June 29th. So May why did 24th. you wait a month to find it? It wasn't June, it was May. Coming up, the sibling's mother appears in court to testify. This is her personality. You trusting her to do something and she doesn't do that. And later, a fish enthusiast demands answers and money from the fish sitter he says murdered his precious pets. He said that all my fish were dead. I told him, well, I'll go to the police right now. He says, you don't need to, I'm here already. Yeah, I ran to the police department. I mean, when I found that out. Plaintiff Jason Scott says his sister didn't tell him her state-funded babysitting money was cut off. He's suing for unpaid child care services. Defendant Dana Scott says she doesn't know because she paid her brother off with a truck. She's countersuing for fees related to a truck. I have text messages that says that on June 29th, she texted me and said, uh, I just found out today I'm cleaning out my desk. I have a witness to testify that I was indeed watching the kids during the entire month of June. I'm going to look at the text messages from your phone, but also let me hear from your witness. Oh, wow. Hmm. Huh. Whammy. How are you, ma'am? Hi. Would you state your name for the record? Sedalia Thomas. Are you related to the plaintiff or defendant? Yes, I'm their mother. Did you know your mother was coming today? Nope. Surprise. <laughs> yes, kidding. very much so. First of all, she didn't let him know that she had lost her job until June, like he said. Did you know that she was fired? No, I didn't, because this is her personality. And that's what I said to him. You trusting her to do something, and she doesn't do that. Their father passed away, and uh, we signed an agreement that she would pay her brother. She has two brothers, and she was supposed to give each of them $50,000. Where was that money coming from? It was coming from the house. That she her wanted, father left. Yeah, that her, the father left them all. In reality, each of them should have walked away with 100000 The house was appraised at three hundred. She got the three hundred. Matter of fact, she got over 300000 So she sold the house? I don't know. No, she didn't. No. She just I refinanced it. She refinanced it. She just and, refinanced and how much that. money did you see from that refinancing? $10,000. What was your share of the 300000 What was your share? The house was left to me. The, the house belonged to me. So, when I'm, so I'm my father the entire, was... the house was left to you and you only? Yes. Was the house left to, only to her? No. <laughs> okay. Did he have a will? You, no, he no. didn't have a will. Okay, so if he didn't have a will, the house wasn't left to you. If, if he doesn't have a will, by law, the house is left evenly between the children. The house was, did, was not physically owned by my father. But ma'am, I, I just want to explain this okay. to you. Your father did not have a will. So by law, okay. I'm telling you yes. the way the law works, okay. his property is left to his children. Yes. And it's divided equally yes. among you. So if there are three of you, then the three of you equally own the, the house together. So it wasn't left to you. Okay, let me look at the text messages. Job told her, this caseworker, I was terminated as of today. I'm walking into the office now. Call you later. That is correct. You didn't tell him you were terminated in May, obviously, because you said you're walking into your office June right. 29th. Right, that was May 25th. Ma'am, the date of this text message is June 29th. Okay. Yeah. They're, they're on the phone. That's why I asked to see the phone. Okay. I'm looking at the dates on the phone. Okay. Tell me about your counterclaim, ma'am. Uh, I had a truck, a 1993 Chevy, uh, my brother needed it in order to pick my children up from school. We came to an agreement that he was going to purchase it. Um, I asked him to purchase it for um, $3,000. Should I answer? <laughs> yes, ma'am. This is Judge Faith. He's busy in court right now. He'll have to call you back, okay? <laughs> okay, we'll talk to you soon. All right. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like, yo, I'm going to be on TV tomorrow. Y'all check me out. <laughs>
he begged for the truck. We came down to $2,000 with understanding that if he didn't pay the $2,000 on time, that it would revert back up to the $3,000. Did you pay her anything for the truck? No, Your Honor. I never wanted the truck. The but, truck... but did you agree? You used the truck. You took the truck. Did you agree right. that you would make I'll... payments on the truck? No, Your Honor. You never agreed to that? The truck never suited my needs. But you were driving the truck. You had the truck for how long? For a month or two. More and than that. But you still have the truck now? As in storage, not So as, here's as, what I think. I think that there was some kind of agreement about this truck. Right, and in, the truck in, was in stolen place. while in his possession as well. But you got it back? Yes. yes. The truck How? was recovered. The uh, police by the, department? The, yeah, local police department found the truck, uh, put it into uh, their... The and so who has the title to the truck? Right here, Your Honor. Great. May I see that, please? The truck is still working? No. Wait, yes, but no. When they stole it, they took pieces of it apart, and you got to wiggle and jiggle it and everything to get it to, to start up. Blue Book value of the truck is $1,000. I believe there was an agreement to purchase the truck. I'm going to deduct $1,000 from the amount. This is your truck. I'm going to have her sign the title over to you. I just find you to not be very credible in, in your testimony okay. today. I don't know why you would lie to your brother and act like you were going to work for an entire month I, and you weren't. I don't recall him three thousand three hundred eighty dollars just Thank before you. the plane. If good luck. We'll always be family and I'm glad that this thing is finally over and resolved. It wasn't like that, and my brother knows that um, it was not as he portrayed it and how he said it was. Plaintiff John Rinaldi says the defendant's girlfriend smashed his two tanks, killing all of his beloved fish. He's suing for the replacement costs of fish and fish tanks. Defendant Kiko Vargas says he doesn't know because he didn't kill the fish, and there's no contract that said he'd be responsible if the fish died. John Rinaldi? Yes, Your Honor. You were suing the defendant, Kiko Vargas? Yes, Your Honor. For $1,893, you say he owes you for replacement fish and two fish tanks. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, so why don't you tell me what happened here, sir? The first week in April, um, I had two bad things happen. <laughs> I was evicted from the place that I was living in. I was also laid off from my job. So immediately, I put my belongings in storage, but I had two tanks uh, with exotic fish. One was 35 gallons and one was 25 gallons. And uh, these were really uh, cool fish. I put a posting on Craigslist to find someone to take care of them for about two months while I was looking for a new place and I could bring my pets with me to my new home. You posted this on on Craigslist. On Craigslist, yes. Mm -hmm. It said, uh, I will be, I will bring one or both tanks to you near Reseda, $100 for two tanks for two months. I had about six people respond to the posting, and the last one was uh, Mr. Vargas. How many fish were we talking about here? Uh, there were 50 fish in these two tanks. We have pictures of some of them here. That's a leoparditis there, which is like a tiger. The ones on the bottom with the orange belly are called paku. They're related to piranhas. When they grow up, they have teeth like a human. Uh, but they're, they're not carnivores, they only eat plants. And their mating ritual is almost like between a dance and between like fighting and whatever. They would spin around each other and they would make a path through different things that they would follow. Mm -hmm. Often I'd be watching TV and I'd turn off the TV to watch the fish because it was like dancing with the stars, you know, dancing with the fish. And I really got close to them. I really enjoyed having them in home. Mr. Uh, Vargas. Yes. You saw this ad, had you ever done this before? Never. I've never taken fish, taken care of fish before. Uh, the ad, it was really interesting about the ad because I needed something that was stress-free. I am a performer and I got a lot of stress behind me. And maybe what I'll... kind of performer are you, sir? I, I, I could be a singer. We, okay. I have a hit song called Scandalo uh, okay. that sold millions. But um, I just wanted to take care of I love something. How, I love how he's, he sold millions, but let's go, uh, let's go well, ahead with the case. It's not well, about me right anyways, now, right? It's but, about the fish. I just wanted to have something that I could take care of. How long do you have the fish before there's an issue, right? Because you didn't well, get actually, any of your fish back, right? No. What happened? Okay, uh, about um, the first week in May, uh, Mr. Vargas called me and he said, TJ, I have bad news for you. He said that he and his ex separated and that she, when she left, she smashed both of the tanks and all my fish were dead. I told him, well, I'll go to the police right now. He said, you don't need to, I'm here already. Yeah, I ran to the police department he I mean, said when I found that out. How'd you find out? Well, actually, my housekeeper, I was at the studio and she found the tanks on the floor, one tank on the floor and the other one was like a different color. What happened though? What happened? She doesn't know. 
But my roommate, and it was not my ex, my roommate, who I was trying to kick out, going through the process of evicting her, well, she wasn't there no longer. Sir, who yeah. killed the fish? I mean, there was a murder happening. My roommate did it. You know that? You know what? And I and tried to explain to him. what proof do you have I, of that? What proof do you have of that? Well, you know something? I, we don't. Let me see the police report. I don't have the police report. I tried to get it, the police report. I, we went direct. I called him from the police department. And then you had to go to another department in L.A. called the Animal Cruelty Department. And these people are, are no joke. I mean, if an animal dies, they show up. You know that? And these three cops showed up at my house. They were investigating the whole incident. So what was the conclusion of the investigation? Coming up on Judge Faith, the murder mystery gets a little more fishy. Whatever happened to the roommate? Did the police find her? No. They never really looked for her, Your Honor. I didn't kill him. Plaintiff John Rinaldi says Kiko killed his beloved fish. He's suing for the replacement costs of fish and fish tanks. Defendant Kiko Vargas says he doesn't owe because he never signed a contract that said he'd be responsible if the fish died. There's no evidence that there was an actual murder happening or like the fish. Thing. And I showed it. I showed well, you that. know, homicides, just so you know, they only involve actual people. So when we're talking about pets, we're, we're talking about property okay. under the law. Okay. So no one's going to be charged with murder. Oh, okay. I mean, I don't know, but he, right. I mean, he made me sound like I killed the fish and I didn't kill the fish. I tried to find it. Well, knows. no, someone killed the fish, obviously. This is what, the bottom of the trash can? Yeah, this is the housekeeper took a picture of it because she wanted to make sure that she's not responsible. Whatever happened to the roommate? Did the police find yeah, her? Well, what happened was we cannot find the roommate, which I explained to him. Never, to they never the found her? No. They never really looked for her, Your Honor. They, they didn't. They didn't have enough to charge her with anything, and so they couldn't pursue it. These fish were left in Mr. Vargas' care. If this was my dog, if this was my car, my boat, if I left him with my child to watch my child, then my child... I told child, you I never took care of fish before. You're responsible. I left these fish in your care. After this happened, I called him and I said, aren't you even going to pay me back the money that I gave you to care for the fish? He said, I guess I need to call my lawyer, and he hung up the phone. I didn't kill him. I didn't do nothing with I mean, I... I like the fish. They were cool. You know that? They were really cool. And he knows that. You know? And when they, when they were gone, I ran to the police department. Didn't I call you like 6 in the morning? I'm not saying you yeah. don't care. I'm just saying you're okay. not taking responsibility. And May I see your evidence of how much it would cost to, how much the value of the fish? This is the tanks. And so that's the dollars, dollar amounts. This is the purchase price, right? Uh, I went to a, a bunch of fish stores and said, what would, be, what would it cost me to replace this fish, that fish, this fish? Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith Rules. Mr. Vargas, let me talk to you about something. You're claiming someone else came in and destroyed this property. Right. And you had nothing to do with it. This person is nowhere to be found to get confirmation of this story that you're telling me. All I know is you were the you were the person left in charge of taking care of the fish, and now they're all dead and the two tanks are destroyed. Right. So you're responsible for that. You were the one that was left in charge of this. You asked for a certain amount, eighteen ninety three. I'm going to give you a percentage of what you asked for based on what I looked at in your evidence and what I think is a fair evaluation. So my judgment in this case is for the plaintiff in the amount of one thousand four hundred and nineteen dollars. Good luck to both of you. I did what I could to feed them and nurture them and take care of them, and I felt like they gave that back to me when I was watching them perform and whatever. It made me smile. It helped me get through hard days and whatever. Uh, it was like when you spend time with your family. I was proud of having this fish, but you know, it, something happened. It's like having an earthquake, and they end up dying. And it was sad making that phone call to them. We're always interested in what you have to say about our cases. Write us with your thoughts or comments. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or my Instagram. I look forward to hearing from you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.